Appreciate you clicking once again, movie peeps. Let's talk about some movie news. Some of the things we'll be discussing here today, guys, is it looks like Marvel and Sony are trying to work out a new deal for Spider-Man. What could that mean? We got this interesting leak online that lets us know of a Scream spinoff in the works. Does it sound interesting? And with Transformers 1 releasing this week, the producers of the live-action Transformers movies are giving us details of what we can expect in the next film. Oh, we're going to be diving into that so much more, so you guys already know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment. Real quick, just to keep you guys informed, uh, for the next couple of days, I will be heading down to Austin for Fantastic Fest. It's a film festival that mainly revolves around horror movies, and that does mean I get to watch Terrifier 3 today. I am so excited, but also heartbroken. I won't be doing my Terrifier 3 review with my glorious animatronic right there so i'll be filming some temporary reviews over there and other content if big things drop other quick thing before we get into the news uh yeah the first two episodes of agatha the new marvel disney plus show just dropped i did watch the first two episodes i'll be posting my first impressions and thoughts on the clips channel so if you really want to know what i think of agatha so far you can see it there but okay with that done let's jump into our first movie news story and that's earlier this week we got revealed a trailer for a movie called dogman now this is one of those things where hollywood is finally making things I am not nostalgic or I didn't grow up with and that's this book series that is a spin-off from the Captain Underpants universe but man there are so many of you out there that are so excited and are pumped for this movie I was just most shocked to the origin story of this dang character a cop and his dog who get into a horrible accident and the only way to save their lives is to fuse the dog's head on top of the cop's body giving birth to dog man i cannot imagine going through that kind of procedure yet it is kind of hilarious for a children's movie but aside from that horrifying origin i think the animation looks nice it seems like it could be a decent movie the january release date does have me a little scared it's just gonna be eh but i'm just more happy for you who grew up on this are now excited to see the movie i think it looks decent next up we got a trailer for a movie called mickey 17 this is being directed by bong joon ho the director who won an oscar for best picture for the movie parasite which is a film i really ended up loving so it made me all that more excited to see this especially when way back what feels like two years ago they dropped the first little teaser of robert pattinson inside this device it looked very ominous and serious giving off sci-fi vibes so i was like all right give this to me what is this gonna be like and I was befuddled by the tone of this trailer. I think anybody who was looking forward to this movie was just kind of taken aback with Robert Pattinson's little silly voice. Nah, I wouldn't be surprised if you're thinking at this point, what have I done? The tone not really being as serious as the first teaser trailer let off and this movie feeling a lot more like a comedy revolving around this guy who signs up to be cloned working up in space and it looks like every day one of his clones dies and he just gets replaced by another one the following day. There was some talk even that Warner Brothers just did not understand the movie, didn't really like it, so much so that this went from being released during the Oscar season to now getting released January of next year, letting you know when studios think a movie's gonna be crap, they dump it in January. But I don't know. The movie could end up sucking and maybe Warner Brothers and David Zaslav actually made a good decision for once. But there was something kind of refreshing and different about this tone and I'm glad it's something I wasn't expecting. I could have been happy with a straight up serious sci-fi clone story. But sometimes being given something you didn't know you wanted can be all that more fun. So actually I'm still looking forward to this movie and I feel like it could still be a blast. But I want to throw it off to you guys. Uh, how did you feel about the trailer for Mickey 17? Bringing us now to talk about some Transformers. Obviously, this is the week that Transformers 1 gets released in theaters. A lot of Transformers fans out there excited, and you should be. It's a pretty good movie. And well, with that, we have producers and people involved with the Transformers franchise letting us know what we can expect for the live action version of Transformers. Now, just to bring you guys up to speed, if you didn't know, by the ending of the last Transformers movies, Rise of the Beast, they finally brought in the G.I. Joes and have teased the crossover of Transformers and G.I. Joes. We've even gotten reports that Chris Hemsworth is not only voicing Optimus Prime in the animated stuff, but now he's going to star in the live action movies, really making Transformers the franchise of Chris Hemsworth. And well, one of the producers gave us some details. Now, I will say it is a lengthy statement, so lengthy, I feel it'll just be boring for me to read it for four minutes straight. So instead, I'm going to hit you with the bullet points, but I am going to leave it up on the screen if you want to pause and read it for yourself. Essentially, what he lets us know is that, yes, the next live action movie is going to be this crossover 
between Transformers and G.I. Joe. He does let us know that as of right now, they're still working on the script and they haven't locked down the exact story. But the most interesting part about this statement is that he is saying we will be seeing more of the Transformers POV in this movie. This is where I do want to read at least a small part of the statement where he says, instead of them reacting to humans or reacting to the human's plot, what is their drive? Has to be part of that story now. And man, it's crazy. It took them, what, seven, eight movies to realize people go to the Transformers movies to see the Transformers? I thought Witwicky was the goat. Well, he is, but we are there for the Transformers, and it's crazy how long it's taken after review and review of every Transformers movie. Critics going, it was fun, it was entertaining, action was cool. That human plot, though, kind of lame. And now they're realizing, well, this time around, we're trying to make it from the perspective of the Transformers and have them essentially be the main characters. The only other part about this statement is he does say there's a struggle of how to balance out the characters because you're going to have your group of Transformers in the movie your group of gi joes and they're still wanting to throw in a group of human characters that is in the mix of all this i don't know so we'll see but you guys hearing that the producers are finally saying next movie is the crossover and it'll be more from the perspective of the transformers do you like the sound of that bring this now to talk about some scream i love it when in the spooky mama season of halloween we get to talk about some horror movie news and well scream is still one of my favorite horror franchises last night a user by the name of kate carpenter who is a big fan of the scream franchise and is also a subscriber to production weekly was looking at the listings of movies and tv shows going into production in hollywood when she stumbled upon this one it read untitled scream spin-off status currently in development produced by Kevin Williamson where they have a plot reading a spin-off of the Scream franchise centering on Hayden Panettiere's character Special Agent Kirby the sole teenage survivor of the second Woodsboro murders known as the Woodsboro Massacre remake the highest body count and most violent massacre of all ghost face killing sprees and oh my god as a Scream fan I'm kind of losing my mind a little bit on this so so many angles to talk about this for one i do want to tame expectations here although this is coming from production weekly that has been reliable and like i said it's a website where they just list off tv shows and movies going to production there have been a lot of times in the past where they list something and then we get revealed oh my god this is happening and it turns out to be true but there have also been other times where the information on the site isn't always correct especially when it comes to the plot synopsis sometimes if like it's a comic book movie they'll just take the plot synopsis of the comic book it's based off i remember that happened with the batman when that was going into production instead of using the actual plot of the batman movie they just copy and pasted the plot of batman the long halloween which is the comic book that was inspiring the movie so there is always a bit of truth to these reports but you can never fully 100 percent believe them so just saying that right now but now getting on to like how i feel as a scream fan we have heard ever since they started making the new scream movie scream 5 and 6 radio silence were pretty open they're also working on a spinoff. They would like to make more, and, well, Spyglass is going to want to milk this thing if they're even letting a controversy not stop them from making Scream 7. They know there's money to be made in this franchise, so we always knew a spinoff was coming in some way or another. My obvious thought is that it was going to be on the Stab franchise, that they were finally going to do that as kind of like a separate thing from Scream and just go full crazy ridiculous slasher like the Stab franchise should be. And that's kind of what I was waiting on is the day they announced a stab movie i had no idea we would actually get kind of a side story literally spinning off within the scream universe this idea of having hating panettiere as special agent kirby reed who in scream 6 did mention she specializes in ghost face related killings that is an obvious open door to just endless scream movies that make a lot more sense than always having to connect it to either Sidney Prescott or now Melissa Barrera's character of Sam Carpenter, which you gotta admit is always kind of like the S side of Scream. While I love Sidney, while I love Sam, finding a narrative reason to always have to go back to them can sometimes be lazy and you're ending up retreading storylines from other Scream movies like the end of Scream 6 did. Doing something where Kirby's just like at her desk working in law enforcement and then she gets a file and goes, oh, in Minnesota there's these ghost face killings and uh, we don't know what's going on. You can meet a whole new group of teenagers or adults or whatever. Different commentaries on horror and then when you're done with that, you just move on to the next town and the next weirdo who's trying to do ghost face killings. It's 
honestly kind of a perfect little formula. I am down for this. Other fans were also quick to notice that it looks like in this release, Spyglass wasn't attached. I'm not sure what that is about. It would be so awesome to get Scream related stuff where Spyglass isn't there just because of how horribly they've tainted the franchise in like record breaking time. I did see some fans speculate that there is kind of a weird loophole where Spyglass doesn't exactly own Scream 4. And since Kirby is a character created in Scream 4, spinning off from there, there might be a loophole where Spyglass doesn't have to be involved. But I don't know. Uh, only time Time will tell, like I said, take it for a grain of salt for right now, but this is a possibility. I think it does sound intriguing just as a Scream fan, but you guys let me know, how do you feel about this? Bringing us here now to talk about some Spider-Man. Now, he's kind of been all the talk the last couple of weeks with Venom 3, what's going on with Spider-Man 4, is there gonna be some sort of crossover and they're gonna fight Noel? Well, in the midst of all this, we've got a new report from Daniel RPK that lets us know Sony and Marvel are working on a deal that will allow Spider-Man to appear in more MCU movies. Now, you might think, well, yeah, Chris, he's gonna show up in Doomsday, Secret Wars, and then Spider-Man 4, 5, and 6. This deal is separate from that. That seems to be locked down and done. This deal is looking to be about Spider-Man attached to other projects outside from Avengers movies, and that's where it gets really interesting for me. Because that always seemed to be the deal, right? Is uh, Sony can have their solo movies, they'll work in the MCU, and then the MCU will get Spider-Man in Avenger movies, and we live in a happy time. But now it looks like good old Kevin Figoli is thinking about using Spider-Man in other superhero films that are not Avenger movies, and uh, the speculation begins to what those could be. Spider-Man has had a long history of popping up in so many other superhero comic books, and he usually blends in well with them. I mean, like off the top of my head, the whole reason we want Spider-Man 4 to be about Spider-Man with Daredevil is just because that pairing makes sense. They're in New York. It works well together. Daredevil and Spider-Man also share a villain of Kingpin. Like that just works harmoniously. But then you also have things like the Fantastic Four, where Spider-Man's first issue in his ongoing series was him teaming up with the Fantastic Four, and he's kind of been always on and off with them throughout the years. Could we see the second Fantastic Four movie feature Spider-Man in it? That would also be a great way to also let audiences know, yeah, in the first Fantastic Four movie, they were on a separate Earth in a different universe, but now in the second movie, which will probably take place after Secret Wars, when they're finally part of the main MCU, you throw in Spider-Man and then the world knows, oh, okay, he's in the MCU because Spider-Man's right there. So that could end up working. Uh, the big one I also think about is like the X-Men. Sometimes Spider-Man in the comics gets classified as a mutant, other times not, but whatever the case, he does sometimes partner with the X-Men and join their little academy. I wouldn't mind that idea. I just feel like, man, the X-Men is already a movie that's going to be littered with so many characters. Characters I want to shine and have their own place. Throwing Spider-Man in there would just kind of steal the spotlight just a tad bit. Another idea is the Young Avengers, which is an idea I think a lot of people hate. And I, I understand that's like the weirdest one, but there is a real part of me that feels like Spider-Man could lead this Young Avenger team that Marvel has been setting up for the longest. So really, yeah, it's kind of like your guess is as good as mine where Spider-Man could show up, but I think it's kind of exciting to hear Marvel wants to throw in Spider-Man in a non-Avenger movies throughout the MCU what could those be? But that is all movie news I currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and well, I'm off to pack my bags to head to Fantastic Fest, and I can't wait to see Terrifier 3 tonight. I love all you movie peeps. Take care.